Howard Storm, in his 2000 book, My Descent into Death and the Message of Love That Brought Me Back, had a life-threatening illness. And during it, he left his body, went to the afterlife, and got attacked by monsters there. I'm talking about like humanoid things with long teeth and claws, and they climbed on him and they bit him. And there are actually quite a lot of other near-death experiences that although people eventually encounter the beautiful human forms of angels and God, feature hostile, monstrous beings intent on evil. That's freaky. And do you know what it kind of sounds like? It sounds like a movie. Why do we make movies and write books and program video games where evil is monstrous looking? Why are we universally drawn to doing that? Because in real life, people that do horrible things usually just look like normal people. And it's kind of shocking. It's actually easier to accept, oh, you look like a monster. That's what monsters do. But really, you would do that? Like so many things, the key to understanding this and making it make sense is found on the spiritual side of reality. I think Howard Storm and those other people are telling the truth. I think they really did see monstrous spiritual beings. And in this episode, we're going to discover why people in hell look like monsters and people in heaven look human. And of course, for that, we're going to need some water balloons, a couple optical illusions, and some 18th century spiritual travelogues. Hey, thanks for watching. Today we're talking about heaven and hell, and I feel like anytime I'm talking about heaven and hell, I need to say, I'm not talking about what you could call the traditional concept of heaven and hell, where there's a box that's called heaven and God will put you there if you did a couple of things right, and there's a box called hell, and God will put you there if you didn't do the requisite stuff, and you will suffer in hell forever. Heaven and hell are much more nuanced than that, and they're much more fair, and they're much more rational than that. And what they are is going to be displayed as we move through these three sections. So in this episode, we're looking at where humanity comes from and how humanity is tied to heaven or hell. First section is we're going to be seeing the human. Second se section is accepting the human. And the first two are about what heaven is and why the nature of participating in heaven makes you look human. This is why angels and near-death experiences, all kinds of guides and helping beings, they'll look like people. And it's actually why we look like people too. And then in the third section, we're going to look at what hell is and why the nature of participating in hell makes you look inhuman and terrifying. All right, let's go. This is part one, see the human. There's sometimes there's things that you can't see unless you know what you're looking for. The expectation of what you're looking to find changes how you see the thing. For example, look at this duck. That's a nice picture of a duck, right? It's a duck, somebody drew a duck. Or is it a rabbit? Can you see it? Yeah, it took me a second, but of course the, the beak is the ears and it's facing the other way. But you don't see that until somebody tells you to look for a rabbit in it. Actually, it goes even farther. This is an awesome article in Live Science uh, about this. There's two of them. And I bet you can see two ducks. If you want to look at two ducks, you can probably see two rabbits if you look at two rabbits. But try to see one duck and one rabbit. I couldn't do it. But they say you can if you have this new piece of information. Imagine a duck eating a rabbit or trying to eat a rabbit. Now, does it work? For me, it worked perfectly when I was reading that article. It just, nothing was apparent until I was told what I was looking for, and then it was obvious to me. This also happens in the can't unsee phenomena, and this was from an article in The Atlantic. Here's the FIFA World Cup 2014 logo from when the World Cup was in Brazil. And you can see it there, and yeah, what does it look like? Oh, it's like a, it's a soccer ball, but also I guess it's kind of hands, right? Holding a soccer ball. Well, apparently there's some people who noticed something about it that now they cannot unsee. And I think you won't be able to either. So turn off the video if you don't want to have the, your perception of this change forever. That 
logo is a facepalm. It is somebody covering their face in shame with their hand. I didn't see it at all before, but now that I've been told about it, that's what I'm going to see forever is the face palm. <laughs> like, oh no, soccer or football or whatever. This same thing happens in a very, very positive sense with the way that angels see God. It's, it's very difficult to perceive God. I think you can look around in life and, and two people can be looking at this very same life and one of them says, there's absolutely nothing spiritual going on here. There's absolutely no plan. There's no providence. Because look at it. Swedenborg says that angels are firmly convinced that God exists. And the reason is they can see God. And the reason is they know what they're looking for. They know who and what pattern they're looking for. Swedenborg says, none of the angels in the heavens ever sees the divine in any form except the human form. Divinity is human. And when you're looking for a human God, you can find a human God. He actually says angels in the higher heavens or the deeper heavens, which is just a deeper state of mind, just a more open to God, can't even think about God or what is divine in any other way than human. So they look out and they see the same reality that we do. Even though they're seeing the spiritual world and we're seeing the physical, we can be in the same state of life. So you could do what the angels do. Because even though they're somebody in an angelic state of life is seeing the same events that we would see, the same objects around us, the same properties, same schedules and things happening. They see God in it. That state sees God in it because angels know they're looking for a human God. They know what they're looking for. Oh, it's a duck. It's a rabbit. They, they know. It's a face palm. They know what they're looking for and suddenly they can see it in everything. There's a couple of reasons why it's so clear to them. First of all, from Heaven and Hell 79, Swedenborg says of angels, they are led into the necessity of thinking this way because of the essential divine that is flowing into them. State of heaven is a state of acceptance of the divine, so it's just, just the nature of it. And also because of the form of heaven, which determines how their thoughts reach out around them. Let's go. Let's get some good high-end Swedenborg weirdness, but weirdness to the point where you're, oh, that's, that is really cool. Here we go. In fact, all the thought that angels have spreads out in heaven, and they have intelligence and wisdom into the proportion to this outreach. The way that heaven works, no angel can see it clearly, but heaven is actually in the human form. Angels just, they, they just look out and they see landscapes and things like we do in cities and towns. It doesn't look like a person, but all it is a giant person. And all the angels are doing functions that are like the things that would happen in a person. There are angels, the inmost angels are like the heart in that person. And they, they radiate out this essential life. There are angels who are like the lungs in that they gather in crucial ideas. There are angels who are like the hands and the legs, the practical doing angels. There are angels that are connecting between the two like ligaments and they're all playing the same role in heaven. And each angel, like each part of the body benefits from the rest of the body, like your just cell deep in your elbow is oxygenated from the lungs. Like it's, it's all giving to all. Angels get their wisdom from the fact that their thinking taps into the rest of this angelic brain trust. And the angels that are in the middle have that to such an extent that it's obvious to them that this is how the system works. Swedenborg goes on, this is why everyone there acknowledges the Lord, the Lord being God as a human being, since the divine human exists only in him. I have not only been told this by angels, I have been allowed to perceive it when I was raised into a more inward sphere of heaven. So because the more angelic you get, and to be angelic is just to see things as they really are and um, love things as they should be loved, like just to love what's good, what we know is good and right, and to see things how they really are, that's what puts you in this angelic mode of life. And within there, 
you can see more and more clearly how everything works. And angels who are really at a vantage point where they can see the operating of the divine, their thinking spreads out. Here we go. Here's our weirdness. So they understand what these other angels are doing and why it matters and how God is flowing through this whole thing to do good to the human race. And they can tell, you know what? These angels really are like the lungs in a person. And the way that they connect to these angels really is like the way the chest cavity connects to the shoulder. The way these angels support and learn these things really does carry us like the feet carry the body. They can start to see undeniably that the relationships between these people who are angels mimic on a grand scale the relationships between the systems in the body of the human being. So they can just tell and just see, look, it's just how things work. Humanity, the human form is the divine design. It's just how this works. I can tell. Swedenborg goes on. We can see then that the wiser angels are, the more clearly they perceive this, which is why the Lord is visible to them. They can pick out the pattern because to them, they can't unsee that there is running heaven and behind the love and wisdom in every single angel, there is this human God. So angels see this human God in everything, the rabbit and the duck, and that is the first step in an accepting of that human divinity that leads to the heaven being in the human form in them individually. Swedenborg talks about it here. Since angels do not perceive an invisible divine being, which they call a formless divine, but a visible divine being in human form, it's common practice for them to say that only the Lord is a person and that they are people because of him. Sometimes we say, did we create God in our own image? People will critique religion with that, but no, like people are the offshoot of God. God is the original person. He did the person thing before it was cool to be a person. They also say that each of us is human in proportion to our acceptance of him. So human is a sliding scale. You can be more and more human depending on how much you accept God. Hmm. By accepting the Lord, yeah, really, what do you mean by that? They understand accepting what is good and true that comes from him because the Lord is present in everything good and true that comes from himself. Okay. Goodness and truth exist in the Lord. When we accept that goodness and truth, it makes us human somehow. Let's talk about water because it's hard to picture what accepting something, changing your form would be like, but this is a pretty sweet example of that. Here's water. Maybe you've heard of it. Water has certain characteristics to it, right? It's square right now. It's only square because this, that's the edges of this tub. It wants to expand out to find its level. It jiggles and wiggles. I have a PhD in water, by the way. It jiggles and wiggles, and it's heavy. Those are a couple of the characteristics of water. Here's some balloons. Well, you already know where this is going. Here's some balloons. Balloons do not have the characteristics of water. They do not spread out to fill their space. They're not really jiggly and they're not heavy. But you can fill these balloons with water. The balloons can accept water into them and the intake of that water shapes the balloons. So if we end up with some awesome water balloons, at the end of the segment, I'm gonna throw these at the camera, so stay tuned. Suddenly, by intaking this water, these balloons now are taking on the characteristics of the water. Because although they can't entirely, they're still held up by their you know, old balloony structure, they want more to flow out into whatever space is around. They jiggle and wiggle like water does. PhD, remember. And they're also heavy. They're heavy. They even make watery sounds. They are starting to take on the form 
of water because they accepted the water into them. You are a water balloon, but instead of water, you're taking in the goodness or the, the love from God and then the truth or the way to live from God. And the more that we accept those into us by loving what God loves and living in the divine design, the more we start to exhibit the characteristics of God, which the characteristics of God are the characteristics of humanity, because God is human. So the more that you are letting that in, instead of turning you into a big old water balloon, it turns you into a human. And the deeper into heaven you go, which is just deeper into a state of mind where you're accepting more of God, the more human you are. So instead of water with its characteristics, it is humanness. Humanness, anything humanness fills, becomes more human. So I know that this show was called People in Hell Look Like Monsters, and here it is, the third section before we start talking about hell and the forms that appear in there. But I need needed to show that everything happens because of universal principles. The afterlife is not arbitrary. It's not God is sitting there in a throne and deciding, you're going to look good, you're going to look bad. That's nice. Everything happens according to universal, fair, and meaningful and rational principles. Because that's the same way that it is in this world. The reason that stuff has the form it has and stuff rolls and stuff falls because there's a universal principles that apply to everything. The same force that makes people human in heaven is the reason why people outside of heaven look less and less human until you look monstrous by the time you get into hell. Swedenborg says, since the Lord keeps angels engaged in what is good and true, Remember, that's what comes out of God that has humanness in it. Therefore, in wisdom and intelligence, they are in the loveliest and most perfect human form, while the angels of lower heavens are in a less perfect and less lovely form. It's just God's humanness expressing itself more. It only expresses itself more because where it's accepted more, you think about one of those water balloons getting fuller, it's going to be more watery than one that only has a little bit of water in it. This is the unknowable divine. There's some amazing stuff going on there with goodness and truth that we can never quite fully fathom. This is people who are accepting as much of that divine as is humanly possible. This is people who lo love is the center of their life whenever they feel like they get a prompt from God, their heart gets moved by what's good to do. They act on it right away. This is where people are focused on the truth and they want to understand what is right and then get their lives in accord with that. And that's the most important thing to them. This is where people want to live uprightly and within the bounds of what they do know, act morally and civilly and like, civically and like good people. This is where you're first coming after you die and you're making a decision. Then you start to get to where people are rejecting the Lord's influence, rejecting that goodness and truth. Swedenborg says in heaven and hell 80, everything is inverted in hell. In, in heaven's light, the people who are there hardly look humid at all. They look like monsters. They are caught up in what is evil and false and not is in what is good and true and are therefore in the opposite of wisdom and intelligence. Here we've got some figures. And these are from, we didn't have to make these for this show. These are from a tabletop game. There are representations of kind of human but evil looking things everywhere. As I said before, there's tons of video games full of stuff like this. There's tons of movies that's full of stuff like this. There are books. Everything has these kinds of things in it. Our minds exist in the spiritual world. So probably that's where our sense of this t uncanny tension between the human form and the monstrous exists. Swedenborg saw this kind of stuff in the afterlife, as did Howard Storm and these many others. Forms that had some humanity in them, but also had these horrifying distortions of humanity. Swedenborg talked about seeing uh, people who had misshapen teeth and hair and faces and they were bony and all manner of haunted house sort of things. The reason 
that that is, is because hell is the act of not wanting the goodness and truth and rejecting the goodness and truth. So something like the desire to dominate other people, the desire to abuse other people, the desire to harm or rule over unjustly other people, the desire to steal from people. Those things that we know are, well, nobody wants that done to them. We know to, to an extent that's, that's monstrous stuff. In the spiritual world, that becomes visible because if you have a heart that is full of that, it rejects humanity. And in, this, in heaven's light, you can see what it's really like, which it looks like monsters. And every bit of the monstrosity has a meaning. When Swedenborg would see an evil spirit that had terrifying teeth, it's because teeth symbolize sort of outermost truth and it's a misuse of factual knowledge to harm. Uh, terrifying eyes, eyes are uh, an image of your intelligence. And so people who are using their intelligence for nefarious purposes, and it goes all down. Swedenborg would see like skeletal looking beings. And that was because everything human had been stripped away from them by their own actions and intentions. Everything there, it's not just, it's not just get a makeup artist and think up something up. Everything there has a meaning, just like all the beauty you see in heaven has a meaning. And the reason though, that it's a play on the human form, the monstrosity comes from this tension between the desire of evil to destroy itself. Evil by itself is nothing. There's no life in it. If you, if you were something that was just entirely cut off from God, just be a little cloud of dust that scattered and was nothing because nothing that's evil has life on its own. It's like, Coldness is just the absence of heat or darkness is just the absence of light. But because God still loves all these people, even though they've really like lost their way in a major way to this point where most of us would be offended, like, nah, get rid of them. God is still like, no, I love this person. I'm going to try to make their life as happy as I can. He continues to give them the, the basic humanity that allows them to exist. But because the stuff that they're into is so anti-human, you see this it's a human form, but it's also a monstrous form. The two tug at each other and create this scary stuff. So hell and all the things you can see in it is just a visual representation of how far from love and truth the human being can stray if, if that's what they're into. And God will say, all right, if you're there, I'll let you be there. I'm going to keep you as... He, he, he's careful to make sure that these monsters don't attack each other too much, that they don't harm each other. He even, in the name of giving them as happy a life as they can possibly have, they don't even look like monsters to each other. They, they, it's only in what Swedenborg calls the light of heaven, which is where you can really see the truth. Angels see in this light that you can tell that all these ways of living are monstrous. To each other, they just look like regular people because they're all kind of in the same evil. They're, they're not horrified the idea, of course, of course I would betray that person if I could get ahead. We all think that way. So that they can have a decent quality of life, God makes it so that in the light that exists in hell, they look like people. Because, again, God is goodness and truth. And the hu human thing to do would be, even if you came across a monster, as long as you're safe and all that, you'd, okay, well, what can I try to do for you? That's the, that's the nature of the human that, that doesn't change no matter how far away from it you may choose to go. All right, so hopefully that gave you a clear picture of the force that leads to people in heaven looking like beautiful humans and people in hell looking like monsters. This is a principle that's true for us now the human form will thrive where human behavior follows it. So for example, I've got a human body just like all of you do, but it's only the only reason I do is because I do the behaviors that it needs to survive. I, I eat, I breathe, I drink. If I didn't do that very soon, it would die and decay and there wouldn't be a human form anymore. The spiritual human form, all of us have a spirit right now and we can make that thing more and more human by loving and growing wise by accepting God who is goodness and truth. The more we do that, you know, you're just a, a water balloon 
that's filling up with humanness or something like that. The point is, it's something we can do right now. And even though, yeah, there's there's a big world out there and there's things that are frightening, uh, there is an order to it and there is things we can learn from it as we look to focus in on our own little world and become more and more human.